Hi, welcome to Gentilus TensorFlow Introduction Part 3. My name is Kor. We will talk about multi-feature linear regression and logistic regression, specifically how to do multi-class prediction, what is cross-entropy, and why we use softmax. Finally, we will show you the TensorFlow cheat sheet number one. Previously, we tried to predict the outcome from a single feature with linear regression. So we have some data points and we try to predict the house price given a house size. To do so, we model our data using linear regression. And then we use machine learning to find the best fit. With the best fit, given any house size, even though we do not have the data points, we can give a good prediction for the house price. Today, we will talk about predicting an outcome with four, two or more features. We are going to have an additional feature called rooms. And our graph will look like that with the data points. So given any house size and number of rooms, we are going to predict a house price even though we don't have the data points. To do that, again, we have to find the best fit. But instead of the best fit being a line, now it is a plane, which enables us to then give a good prediction given any house size and number of rooms. Let's look at the TensorFlow code that we have done before. With a single feature, we first have to define a model, and then we define the cost function, which is in red, and finally, we define the gradient descent, where we try to minimize the cost, which is in green. So there are three parts to the TensorFlow code. When we want to do multi-feature regression, we have to make a change in the model and cost function. For one feature, we use linear regression, y equals wx plus b, where y is the value we are trying to predict, and x is the house size that we have. To get a good prediction, we need to find good values of w and b. When we have more features, for instance, we have rooms, which is x2, now the prediction y depends on x2 as well, but it also depends only on a fraction of x2. Therefore, we have the coefficient w2. So in now to get a good prediction for y, we have to find not only w and b, but w2. This is how we write y equals wx plus b in TensorFlow. With two features, now we have to declare an additional variable, w2, and we have to declare an additional placeholder, x2, for the rooms that we want to feed in. All of placeholders requires data that we want to feed in. So we have an additional data that we need to feed in now, which is the rooms. So when you have three features, you can see that the number of variables and the number of placeholders and the number of um, data that you need to feed in during training increases and it becomes very messy. From the data viewpoint, usually each line represents a a sample, or in this case, a house, and they have the features and the outcome. What we are trying to do thus far is that we have to do a lot of data manipulation. We have to extract out the first feature, feed it in, extract out the second feature, and feed it in, and extract out each feature as required to feed it in, together with the um, actual outcome. So data manipulation also gets messy. There must be a better way to write um, multi-feature linear regression. So let's look at how we can clean up our data representations using matrix. So this is our data. Now we just extract out parts into label and for all features we lump them together. And then the actual values. We don't really need the labels because all the data are aligned by rows. And let's focus on condensing the features. So to clean up the models, this is what we do. 
Notice that first, we group all the features together. By doing so, we no longer require x2. But we have to extend x from one feature to two features. Therefore, we no longer need, sorry, we no longer need the placeholders. But we also need to extend x by the width of x by 1 to become 2. And because we don't need x2, we don't need w2. But because w needs to be multiplied by x and x has been, the width has extended by 2, the height of w has to be extended to 2 as well. Finally, because we don't need x2, we don't need w2, we end up coming back to the same thing. We can rewrite multi-feature linear regression as y equals to wx plus b. So this was how we wrote the tensorflow graphs for single feature and double features. After what we did, we can cancel all those and extend, make the necessary extensions, and then this is what we get. So you can see from single feature to two features, which generalizes into multi-features, there are only two changes. And gra graphically, I'm going to show you what these two changes are. For one feature, you can see that y, which is red, is a scalar. And x is just one feature. w is just a coefficient of that feature. And b is just a scalar. Now, for two features, you can see that y is still a scalar, but x now has two features, so it has a width of 2. Now, w, which are the coefficients of the feature, has to increase to 2 as well, but w uh, is extended by its height to 2. And again, b is just scalar. So that is the difference between single feature and multi-feature linear regression in TensorFlow. Let's talk about next, the logistic regression. What we have been doing is that, given the house size and the number of rooms, we use machine learning to find the best fit so that we can predict the price, which is scalar. In logistic regression, usually we are given something like an image, then we use machine learning to predict whether is it 0, 1, 2, or maybe 9. Right, So the difference is that now the prediction is not scalar, but it's just a discrete number of classes. Now the first thing that comes to your mind is that for house price, we have features such as house size, number of rooms. What about for image recognition? What are the features? Well, the feature is the grayscale of each pixel. These are all the features. So if you have a 10 by 10 feature, then a 10 by 10 pixel image, then basically you have 10 by 10, which is 100 features. So what is the change required to do logistic regression? Well, if you look at the model, we can still use y equals w, y equals to w, x plus b. But in this case, you can see that the x and y differs. Let's take a look at the x first. So for the single feature, as for multi-feature, the x is just house size and house rooms. For logistic regression or image recognition, this is two-dimensional. Let's take a look at the data representation in diagram format. So as you can see, the left is the house and the right is the image recognition. So for the features on the left, the features are all in a single dimension, right? But for the features of the image, they are in multiple dimensions. So we cannot really use y equals to x plus b as it is. Unless, what you can do, however, is that for the features of an image, you can just like uh, move them all into one single long line, like this. Now, to the human, of course, it's much more difficult to see. But to the computer, right, it's still the same. Therefore, what we end up with now is that now x is the same, right? It's a one-dimensional uh, array that has many elements. So what we have to do now is to change y. 
So I have a question here. Why can't you let machine learning predict Y as a scalar? Well, there are actually three reasons. One, if you ask it to predict Y as a scalar, it may predict something at 2.5, right? Which is not a class. Or it can also predict something that is greater than 9. But most crucially, it's because of the cost function. Now, when we're predicting scalar values, we can find best fit by calculating the difference between the actual value and the predicted value, which are all the blue lines, and then we sum them up. And when we try to minimize these blue lines to find the best fit. Now, for logistic regression, this is not true, right? Because whether if it's a 4 and you predict it as a 3, is as bad as if you predict it as 9. So you cannot just sum up all the blue lines. Therefore, we have to rewrite the cost function. So instead of using logistic regression to predict what um, a value, what we are going to ask it to do is to, why not predict what it thinks, what is the probability that it thinks that it is a 0 or 1 or 2 until the number of classes required. So now, the actual will be just that, if it's a 1, then the probability that it's 1 is 1. Therefore, we can easily just compare the two distributions and minimize it as a cost function. So there is, this is what is known as cross-entropy. So to give you an explanation of cross-entropy, you can see y prime is actually the uh, actual, y is the prediction. But you can see what cross entropy does is it multiplies y with minus log of the prediction, right? So minus log y of the prediction actually is actually the inverse of the graph. To understand why it is the inverse, you have to understand what this is the minus log graph looks like. It looks like this. And since our probability is always between 0 and 1, the minus log of probability is always positive. And you can see it's decreasing as uh, probability reaches 1. Therefore, high probability means low minus log. And that's why you get the inverse. So now that we have this, what you can see that cross entropy, actually what it does is just multiply the probability of the actual with the minus log probability of the prediction for each class. So you multiply for the class of 0, 1, and so on and so forth until 9. Now, if you're mathematically aware, then you will notice that since the probability of any class in the actual probability is always 0 unless it is the, the image that is required, in this case 1, right? So that means the only value that exists is just the multiplication between the actual and the minus log probability of the prediction of 1. So the, the higher that the, the machine learning algorithm predicts that it is 1 in this case, the lower, because the minus log probability it will be, and therefore the lower the entropy will be. So that is why the entropy is a great representation of uh, comparing two distributions. So to sum up, instead of we using machine learning to predict uh, a scalar, what we are trying to do is to ask it to predict what's the probability that it thinks it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on in all the classes. So just so how do we do that now? Now you can see, we've covered this before. For one feature, it looks like this. For two features, what happens is that the x will extend in width, and the w, the coefficients, will extend in height. So in logistic regression, it's actually just a multi-feature um, regression, right? Because with the number of features equals to the number of uh, pixels that it has. So we're going to use this. But the only difference now is that Instead of predicting, trying to predict y as a scalar, it has to predict y as a 
class, right? It has to predict what's a property that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until 9. So there are 10 classes. So what you have to do is that the number of features is just the number of pixels that it has. But W will have to change such that its depth is still number of coefficients, which is same as the number of features. But its width now becomes the number of class. And of course, B will also be just the number of classes in width as well. So this is like the TensorFlow cheat sheet. When you're doing one feature, it's on the extreme left. When you're doing multiple features, you can see that X right, will increase its width by, one, by the number of features, and W will increase its um, height by the number of features. And the only changes are in orange, right? And when you do logistic regression, logistic regression is actually just an extension of multi-feature, where Y and B is just now, instead of just being scalar, they are just classes. And you can see the change in pink. So we are almost, but not done yet, because what happens is that when ML does logistic regression this way, it will give you a it won't really give you a probability, but it will just give you a guess that what is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But all these do not sum up into 1, so it's not a real probability distribution. So which makes that this thing doesn't really work when you do a cross-entropy comparison. So to solve the problem, that is why you need to use softmax. Right? Softmax is actually, you can see that it's just um, doing exponential of the uh, predictions. So once it does that, and the, sm the big values become bigger, the small values become smaller, so it's just stretching it. And then what it does is you can see in the denominator, it's actually just summing up everything, right? And then you divide everything by the sum. So you kind of get back the same shape, but the only difference now is that, right, the sum of everything is now equal to 1, so which makes it a valid probability function. And that is why we use, we use softmax. So before softmax, you, you use this. And now, after softmax, all you need to do is just add tf.nn.softmax, and you call this. So that's it. What we've shown you is a cheat sheet for how to do single feature, multi feature, and multi class logistic regression in TensorFlow. We have also shown you um, how to do logistic regression, which is basically doing multi-class prediction. Instead of prediction, predicting outcome as a scalar, you predict it as a probability of a set of values. And then we also show you how to do what, why you need to use cross entropy, because then it enables you to measure the difference between pro um, prediction and actual in logistic regression. And finally, how to, why do you use softmax? The most important thing is that, congrats, now you can go back to the Google TensorFlow Beginners tutorial, and if we read through with all the understanding they've gotten in these gentle TensorFlow uh, videos, then you should be able to understand them. If not, then just drop me a line. Thank you very much.